Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Today, I want to talk about something new. Azure Data Studio. It's kind of not new. It used to be called SQL Data Studio, but um, they've renamed it Azure Data Studio. There's a real purpose behind it. It's a great, great new tool. There's a lot going on with it. There's all kinds of exciting development happening around it. And I want to share a, a sliver of it with you. We're not going to dive deep. There's, there's, a, there's so much to this. All we're going to start with today is connecting up to a database and running a few queries. Simple. Nothing complex. We're just going to do that, see how it goes. Let's check it out. All right, so when I open up Azure Data Studio, right now this is what we get. Just more or less blank real estate. What we can see is over on the left, there are some functions. There are a few menu choices. Down the lower left, we also have the settings option. Um, I'm going to explore all this stuff in different videos. I just want to focus on a few things. What we're going to start with is right here in the center of the screen. Now, I could show servers, um, but what we're going to do is a new SQL file. Let's just let's concentrate on that. So typing a new SQL file, it comes up and we've got, you know, a connection to SQL Server, except for the fact we're not connected to anything yet. So probably what we need to do is make a connection. Now this is going to show recent connections that I've had. I've connected up to my local server or local database, my local server, the default, um, and AdventureWorks database. Now I'm in, I can do this again. But instead, I'm going to go ahead and type just to show you. Now, right now, it just says SQL Server, but there's all kinds of different connections it can do. Um, we're just going to go simple. So that's my server. What kind of authentication? Right now, it supports a, a regular or a Windows login. I'm going to do just a Windows authentication, so I don't have to type in passwords. And we can let it go to the default or we can select a database where it's going to go and get my database list from the server that I've told it. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to AdventureWorks 2017. Um, there are server groups. We could create a new server group and I could alias this server if I wanted to. Um, in this case we're not going to because all we're going to do is connect up to the server and run a couple of queries. So let's go ahead and connect up and now we've got a connection to a, a, a database. So let's do select star from, oh, and you'll notice, let's back up, S-E-L. Yeah, we've got keywords coming up. It's not the old um, IntelliSense, it's actually a little more advanced. Uh, it's only a little more advanced, but still, better is better, can't lie. So select star F-R, there we go. And I'm hitting an enter key to make that do that. Um, and then I still have to hit the space key. Select star from, let's say, person. That's pretty good. Dot. And look, there are the person tables all selected out. You can go over here and say, hey, show me more. And it will give you more information. But we can pick on that and select star from person address. Now, if we want to run this, we can run it. And you see down below, it says starting query execution at line one. It's run the query, and it's returned the result sets, and they're in a nice grid format. Cool. I've also got the messages down below, so I can see those. 19,000 rows affected, uh, total execution time, two seconds, 0.91. But let's go over here to the right. We can export this as CSV. We can export this as Excel. We could export this data set as JSON directly. And we can turn this into a chart. Now we're not gonna do that yet today, but there's a lot of options here, a lot of things we can do. Now we can minimize this. We can minimize the messages. We can reclaim this real estate. any way we want it to work. We've got a lot of control. There's some things that I haven't figured out quite yet how to do, but basically it's doing most of what we need to do. We can disconnect it, we could change the connection, or we could just pick another database from here. 
And, you know, if we want to continue and say, you know, join, um, let's say, person dot, you know, address type. There we go. On. Now, it doesn't help us there. What if we alias these as a, have to hit escape there, as a T. Is that a keyword? Might be. Let's just do ATY. A, aha, recognized it, dot. Is address type in there? I don't see it. Okay, so we're not getting a lot of help. Address type ID, there we go, is equal to, but there's no address type ID inside of this. Okay, so that's probably the wrong choice on the on the join type for that table. So we're not getting a lot of guidance and you know and availability here. Can we say, well, yeah, let's take a look at the definition of the address table. We can go to the definition. Now, what that basically does is go back, query the actual server, and you'll see here in a second, brings us up to the create statement command, which is pretty good. But, you know, not handy for what I real. I just want to look. So we're going to right click and say peek at definition. And then we can see the actual table definition again. So we can see the data types, the columns involved. And sure enough, address type is not in there. So probably there's another table we need to be joining to um, to bring back the specific address type. But we've got all the information we need about the table at our fingertips. Hit escape and it gets out of our way. And we can keep doing that with other commands as, as we want to. We can get an explain plan. I'm going to show it to you. I don't like it. <laughs> the reason I don't like it is because if you'll notice there are three properties here. The select operator has got about a hundred properties behind the screen there that are very, very useful for query tuning, um, understanding what's happened inside the optimizer, and they're all hidden away. We can't get them with right clicks or anything else. There's no way to get at them. So the explain plan currently is not up to snuff, but you know that's my issue, not other people's. I don't think we need to get into the details on that. Um, th that it was a, an overnight flight or something that somebody wrote that program for. And so, you know, it's, it's an initial thing. Let's not beat them up too hard on it. Um, what if we want to format the document? Well, we can. Oh, look at that. It actually does some level of formatting. It's not great. There's not tons of control, but there's some. And again, something's better than nothing. So you can get a little bit of control here better than what you had before. And so the whole thing of running queries here is a slightly enhanced behavior and slightly enhanced performance over Management Studio. There's more things it does. Cut, copy, and paste, obviously. And then your best friend in the world, anytime you start working inside of Azure Data Studio, is going to be Control-Shift-P, which brings up your command palette. So you can see recently used stuff where I've run the, the new profiler. Um, you can add cursor below. There's... Um, snippets, uh, clear the command history, clear the editor history. There's all kinds of fun stuff you can do inside of here. And it gets more and more deep as you go on. And you can see all the extensions, all the different things, all the different commands, all exposed from here. It's actually quite exciting stuff. I really enjoy it. Um, if we were to do view... We can do command palette. We can start changing the appearance of this. We can change the layout. If we want to split left, split right, flip the layout, we can. We can get into all kinds of things. We can look at the servers, the tasks, the explorer, source control, extensions, um, start looking at output, and then go out to terminal and control it directly from there. I mean, so it gets pretty exciting. That's all I want to show today. This is just a bare bones. We are not, I wouldn't even call it scratching the surface. This is connect to a server and run a query. There is so much more that we can talk about within this new tool. So as you can see, just from a querying standpoint, it works. It does stuff you want it to do. It does things, you know, largely in the way you would like it to do it. Um, there's a lot 
of control and manipulation mechanisms I have not gotten into on this just yet. Um, watch this space. I'm going to be recording more videos on this topic. Uh, specifically, we're, we're going to connect it up to um, Azure. We're going to connect it up to uh, um, source control. Um, I'm going to do a whole bunch more things around this um, because I'm really excited about, about this. As a development tool, I think there's a lot here that we can put to work with. And best of all, it lives where you live. If you're in Windows, it lives in Windows. If you're on Mac, it lives on Mac. If you're on Linux, it lives on Linux. And you can run it from any of these systems. Ta-da! And um, off you go. It's great. So what's to complain about, right? It's fantastic. Anyway, that's it. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe because there's going to be a whole bunch more on this topic. And you want, you're going to want not miss out on them. And so um, with that, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.